What's up YouTube? It has been a hot minute since we posted anything on here. Celebrity Esports was started on Impulse as a way of bringing people together and entertaining people in what was undoubtedly the most difficult year since Sunny D changed the flavours to stop turning kids yellow. Seriously. What are you thinking? We launched and ran the NHS Together Charities Cup and raised much needed funds for our brave frontline workers. We brought you the celebs, we brought you the games, and we brought you the showdowns. But enough about what we did. This is 2021, the dawn of a new era. And you are not ready for what we have in store for you. Picture this, six brand new esports teams, each comprising of two celebrity all-stars, and you, yes you or me can i play all hashing it out in the world's first and only celebrity esports league no look i'm not joking there are places up for grabs so make sure that you are following all of our socials which are linked in the description below because very soon we're going to be announcing our all-star celebrity lineup and how you could be teaming up with them to be crowned the very first champion of the very first celebrity esports league and that's not all that's new around here. Are you ready for the best bit? <laughs> Me. The undefeated, reigning champ of average gaming. Average Joe. <laughs> Celebrities, did you think you were safe? Viewers, did you think you were safe? Think again. Because you're not. I'm coming for you. So make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel with bell notifications on to keep up to date with all of our videos. We'll be bringing you video game news, reviews, celebrity challenges, fan challenges, celebrity and fan challenges, and of course, the world's first and only celebrity esports league. So where do we start? Well, I want to hear from you guys. I want you to tell me what games you want to see me play, who you want to see me challenge, who wants to challenge me. Sound off in the comments below or get at us on twitter but before we plow full steam ahead into 2021 let's take a look back at what was hot and what was not from the gaming world in 2020 so which do you want first the good news or the bad news does anybody ever pick the good news first first up on our not so hot list is crucible now there's a good chance that you haven't even heard of crucible there's a much better chance that you've heard of the games that he was trying to compete with such as valorant Overwatch, Apex Legends, Team Fortress 2, and so on. The arena hero shooter genre is an extremely popular choice at the moment in multiplayer gaming, and when Amazon caught wind of this, Jeff Bezos saw it as an opportunity to line his pockets with more of our cash monies. Until now, Amazon Game Studios had only really made games for the tablet and mobile market, and that is where they should have stayed. There are many things that make this type of game good, but what is undoubtedly the most important feature of these games is teamwork. Therefore, anything that developers do to restrict teamwork in these types of games is a big, big no-no. As you may have guessed, Amazon Studios did just that. Crucible's hero abilities were not properly considered, meaning there was little to no opportunity for team synergy. The game launched without a party chat, meaning you couldn't talk to your teammates. And worst of all, the game had no competitive or ranked modes. So Amazon Studios wound up releasing a team-based competitive hero shooter with no teamwork, dead heroes, and no competition in what was one of the saddest and loneliest multiplayers we've ever seen. Thankfully, and kind of surprisingly, Amazon Studios shut down the game servers less than six months after Crucible's release, laying this disaster to rest forever. First up on the hot list, this thing. Look at that. There's nothing quite like the release of brand new consoles bringing that next gen experience. I mean, that's the whole point, right? experiences that you can't get anywhere else but on next-gen consoles. Whilst the Xbox Series X's backwards compatibility is impressive, our pick for the best next-gen experience is the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. It's really difficult to try and describe how good this thing is to somebody who hasn't actually tried it, but I'm going to give it a go. The haptic feedback rumble is so sensitive that it allows you to actually feel the texture of the different surfaces that your character runs across. I'm not joking. So if you're walking through mud, it feels like you're walking through mud. If you're walking through tall grass, it feels like you're walking through tall grass. Trust me, I know how ridiculous this sounds, but 
it works. The real prize on this thing, though, is the adaptive triggers. These things are insane. They're fully mechanical triggers that change resistance depending what you're doing. For example, if you're firing a bow and arrow, you can feel the tension as you draw back the bow. The longer you hold it, the more the tension pushes back. Firing a gun, the triggers will actually recoil. If your gun jams up, the triggers can actually lock up on you. Until now, gamepads were just the gadget that allowed us to control our favourite characters in our favourite worlds, but the PlayStation 5 DualSense takes that immersion to new heights by transporting us into the game world itself. Sony have set a new benchmark for what game immersion can be with these things, and it won't be long before the others follow suit. Next on the not-so-hot list, The Last of Us Pass. Part 2 leaks. Naughty Dog ended the year in a high after The Last of Us Part 2 stole the show at the Game Awards 2020, claiming 8 of the 12 awards that they were nominated for, including Best Game Direction, Best Narrative, and the big one, The Game of the Year for 2020. With all the accolades, it's easy to forget that Naughty Dog actually had a really rough ride in the run-up to the launch of The Last of Us Part 2. Early in the year, they came under fire for their workplace culture with staff members expected to work 12 hour days to crunch the game to get it finished in time. The game went through a kind of development hell after it was delayed on three separate occasions, but worst of all, just days after Naughty Dog delayed the game for the final time indefinitely, the whole game surfaced on a video online the whole thing. Whilst the video was promptly deleted, the damage had already been done. Major plot points and spoilers started springing up all over the internet and the fans were not happy. This left Naughty Dog with no choice but to reverse their decision of the indefinite delay, meaning just one month later the game was released on June the 19th. You know what was hot last year? Community gaming. In a year where an invisible enemy forced us behind doors and kept us apart, we found unique and innovative ways to connect with one another and share memorable experiences. For many of us, that was through online multiplayer gaming. Now I know what you're thinking, Joe, online gaming isn't anything new. I'm well aware, but what is new is the sheer amount of people that played multiplayer games last year. 2020 saw a huge increase in playership thanks to some amazing games that focused on simple fun and accessibility for all. Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Among Us and the Jackbox Party Pack to name a few. Easy to learn, low cost and exceptionally addictive, these games provided a constant and well needed injection of social interaction and were enjoyed uniformly from the most novice gamers to the most seasoned of pros. Our last not so hot entry for 2020, you guessed it, Cyberpunk 2077. <whistles> what a train wreck. Without a doubt, the most anticipated game in recent times. What we were promised was a truly next generation experience, pegged to dwarf games that came before it, a masterclass in video game development, open world freedom and player autonomy. Go where you want, do what you want, become a part of the world that is Night City, carve out your own destiny in a future with endless possibilities, and most of all, a game that was guaranteed to help you forget that Boris had told us all to stay inside. What we got? A red hot ball of molten garbage. <laughs> I mean... Look at this. The game is so far from finished that I wonder if they would have spent the time needed to turn this game into the game that they promised everyone. Would it have actually come out in 2077? When this game came out, I saw people comparing it to Grand Theft Auto V. Have you banged your head? Just look at the state of this. Anyone in the video game industry will tell you how important video game immersion is. The idea of allowing a player to get lost within the experience that that you've created. How could we possibly get lost in this game when things like this happen? Somewhere beneath the tragic car crash that is Cyberpunk 2077 are the good intentions of game designers who bit off more than they could chew and were ultimately crushed under the weight of false promises, investor deadlines and corporate infrastructure in what will go down in history as probably one of gaming's biggest ever disappointments. But that giga hiccup is not where we're going to end this video. Oh no. Because what the gaming world did best in 2020, above all else, was the video games themselves. An undeniable roster of fantastic games, easily one of the best lineups in recent years. So here is some of our favourite games from 2020.
that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like on the video and don't forget, subscribe with bell notifications on to keep up to date with all of our content. Let us know in the comments any videos that you would like to see and I will see you next time.